Yeah, so what did I do this week? It's all about... Well, here. Oh, oh sorry. Welcome back to the grind. Here I am, back at the uh, Porsche 924. And so, this week was all about trying to get the pressure... Well, I tried and tried and tried to get it started, right? Wouldn't run well. It would run, but it wouldn't run well. Then it wouldn't run at all. So I had an electronic ignition in it, and I took the electronic ignition out just to make sure I got spark. Ended up that I had so much fluid into the, uh, with with this thing trying to get it to work right, I had vi hydro, I call it hydro lock, that's a new word for me, but hydro locked the uh, motor, so I had to take all the spark plugs out and spill the gas out of them. Then that followed up with changing the oil so that it wouldn't uh, would be running the oil full of gas. Then... I've got this is the warm-up regulator. I've got that out and I've spent an awful lot of work on that. I spent some work on this thing here getting it so I've got the pressures proper on it. Now I've pretty near got it. I've got it so that the uh, warm-up pressure, the cold pressure is down about here and the warm pressure, hot pressure is up about here. So I need to get the hot pressure up to here and I need to get the cold pressure up to about here. So that's just I've, I've sort of figured out how to do that with this and putting shims in it and I might just take it apart and uh, make it an adjustable thing because I think I can do that but then yeah well I'm, I'm doing all right with the shims so I think I'll just keep on going with the shims okay so stick around and you can see everything I did and uh, <laughs> lots of torture this week it's you know some of it was pretty painful but there you go Enjoy it, and I'll uh, see you next week. Oh, yeah, here now, scratching my head, eh? That's a normal thing around here. Back on the 924. Now, last time I got the, like, the fuel system all set up and the electronic ignition put in there, a new coil, all that kind of stuff, and... Today, I'm going to see if I can figure out fuel pressure stuff. The first I'll do is just uh, this thing here. This is your one bar. Yeah, bars and PSI. So anyhow, it's got to be somewhere around here, I think. 4.5 to 5.5 is where it's supposed to be when it's running. But I'll look into that later and let you know. Then the first thing I do is hook, take this apart here, and in this this line here, goes to the fuel pressure regulator. Now this line, like that's a bypass line there, that goes down to this solenoid thing down here. Hopefully it's working right, and that solenoid thing bypasses all that stuff once it's warm. So you take this off here and put in a. A valve with a switch on it and then hook one side to this and the other side to that anyhow but I'll get that set up and I'll show you yeah there we go now this hose there's a switch here to turn on and off this is the pressure hose underneath here there's all sorts of different connectors here that I've got hopefully they're going to be okay and I think I've got it all hooked together right ish and so we'll just here's the pressure thing this is the uh, flow through valve right on or off so when it's running the pressure off the pump you test the pressure off the pump with that closed and then you test the pressure when it's running with that open I think I'll just I'll read the instructions here and then I'll then I'll, I'll do it there now so I've got it all hooked up everywhere first time I did it was leaking here it seems to be okay now and it seems to be holding pressure in the system so now I've got to uh, too much pressure because it was up around eight it should be around here 
shouldn't be should be around there so I've got to take out a couple of shims there so I'll release the pressure here that takes the pressure out of the system now I'll take that right there out and I'll remove those shims and see if I can get it to run right yeah there now I took out the shims and it's still running way high on pressure even doesn't matter whether this valve is open or closed same pressure So, what's that telling me? It's telling me that the motor is still not warmed up, I guess. I'll let the water warm up and then see what, it, see what happens. Maybe the cold start valve is problematic. Maybe this thing down here, there's a little solenoid in there is problematic. Oh, there's all sorts of things that could be problematic. But right now that's too high and you're taking out all the shims, except for one. I guess I could shim it up a little bit on the outside by putting some more uh, copper washers in there. See if that'll make a difference. Anyway, I'll just uh, let it warm up here for a bit and see if I can get it to settle out. Yeah, so something isn't working right. And I think it's this thing here, the pressure release valve. Like I even took everything out and it still held the pressure up high. So. I'm going to take it off and put it over on the bench and see if I can get that to work properly. I think it's just not not sliding properly or something's going on in there. Anyhow, I'll see what I can figure out. Yeah, there I've got the pressure down to five and a bit there on the bars. That's getting closer. I can make it. I'll tell you how I did that in a minute. Now the motor will rev anyhow. up quite a bit higher now. Hmm. I'll just let it warm up for another minute or two and see what happens. Still running a bit rich, eh? So that's that's why it's smoking so much. Okay, well I'll see if I can get it to run a bit better and then I'll get back to you. Yeah, there, I'm starting to make some progress on it now. I've got the pressure down to, uh, that's the operating pressure, or whatever you call it. Valve closed. If I open the valve, no change. I don't know why. Oh, it's even lower. So, you got to let the pressure out of it and let it build again every time. Anyway, so now I've put some washers there because I thought that there was too many shims in there pushing on it, but it seems to be coming down to the right number now. Now I'll get the uh, shims right so that it's got, it should be about here, right? 65 to 75. Right in there, it should be down here. So I've got to get that changed up. Okay, that's coming. So the pressure comes up, like it comes up to around six here, and the, but then after it runs for a little while, it drops off. So does that mean is the fuel pump not doing it? I guess I have to check the fuel pump pressure somehow. I imagine I can just take that off there and hook something onto that and check the fuel pump pressure. But then how do you check that flow through? Then I just have to check and make sure that it's going to be running properly, right? Eh? Okay, well I can do that. In fact, but I do have a new fuel pump right there and maybe I just throw that in there tomorrow. But that's all for today. I'm not going to get any farther today. It's uh, I'm just going around in circles here. Like I took all the shims out. And in fact, I even put like, it was up around, it was high there for for a while. Like it was up around seven, but then it seemed to drop off. Now it won't go up above that. So I'm suspecting fuel pump. Hmm, maybe, I don't know. 
Okay, well, I think it's time to change the fuel pump and check that out. Oh, oh boy, I did talk and talk and talk and nothing was going on there. Yeah, I'm back on the uh, back on the Porsche, and I did I did some uh, research online. There's a full on there with the 911 Porsche has a similar fuel system to this, and he and he showed how to read all these uh, fuel pressure things. So right now, this is over, overnight. After overnight, it's got uh, residual pressure is, you know, 2.5 bar, which is good. That means that nothing is leaking through where it shouldn't be leaking through. So the fuel system is, the integrity of the fuel system is good. Next is, I want to check the cold, I want to check the system pressure. So this pipe here, this goes up to, comes off the fuel regulator, right? Into the pressure gauge. And that closes it there, so that stops it from going to the warm-up regulator, which is way over in behind there. Now I want to check it so that I want to check, number one, fuel pressure, fuel system pressure, which would be get the pump going and this stuff just the way it is, right? The next thing I want to check is uh, fuel system, fuel pressure with the system cold, which would be that, no electricity to that thing. So then I open up this valve and I should get a reading. And then fuel pressure with system hot, which would be turn on the ignition, let that thing warm up for 10 minutes, and then read it again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll figure out a way to get the, uh, like you can turn across the, on the, uh, hmm, in the fuse box, there's a, what do you call that thing? A little black box, whatever those things are called. And you cross, you take the black box out and you cross over the wires so that the fuel pump will run. And you can run the fuel pump without, basically hot wire the fuel pump so that it runs without um, the ignition turned on. So that makes everything stays cold then, right? Okay, because there's an electric heater on the warm up your regulator. It's got a little electric heater on there that will uh, change things as things go along. Okay, I'll get set up and I'll show you. Yeah, I'm underneath, underneath the dash here, right? So what, what did I do with the, there's, that's the uh, fuel pump relay, okay? So this one here is number 30, right? Yeah, 30 here, 87 here. So that's, one of these is hot. I think this one, this one here goes to the fuel pump. This one here comes from the battery, one or the other way around. Anyway, that doesn't matter, whatever what it is, but yeah, you gotta get it. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the green wire there? Yeah, so the green wire does, I don't know if it's in focus or anything, but incredibly difficult to get that in there, but I did it, hey. Then, next thing that'll happen is, excuse all the camera work here, Now, I've got that set, so the next thing to happen is over here, we hope that's right, anyhow, when I hook this on, should hear the fuel pump go. Yeah, so the fuel pump's running. Okay, then, now, with the fuel pump running, it should be between 4.5 and 5.5 in around there. That should be cold. That should be the system pressure. So now there. So the system pressure is at 4, which is low. Now I have to solve that by perhaps putting some more shims in here. Because that would be this thing here allows the pressure to go out through there so that that's what we got to check next yeah now there so 
most I get out of it is four and a half, four point two bar, and that's as much as the system produces. Now, whether it's a blockage somewhere or what's going on, but there is, I've blocked off, I've blocked off the return line, right? And with the return line blocked off, I'm just picking up, you know, four, 4.5 bar, 4.3 bar. So that means that there's, it's not producing enough pressure the whole system and that's a new fuel pump so I'm going to just take it apart on the on the pump on the filter side there and see what it see what the pressure is at the filter and then I'll I'll keep on digging down till I find out where the pressure blockage is and then we'll sort it out from there yeah so there the fuel pump makes eight bar easily so that's interesting right so I don't have to go that way to figure it out it's in this thing here so it must be in this uh, that there anyway okay I'll just keep on chasing stuff it must be like I don't know if that thing's not um, holding back enough or what I don't know yeah so now it's up to six and a half bar which is higher than I want it but gee whiz at least I got it up I don't <laughs> at least I got it up hey oh well now this thing here is that leaking any or is that yeah it's still, that's leaking away there so I gotta stop that leak for starters Stop that for starters. Anyhow, that'll be. I'll get that stopped. Yeah, I don't know what I did for sure, but I might have got rid of some blockage somewhere. I don't know. Maybe an airlock. I don't know. Anyhow, so it's holding at 0.3 of a bar. Now, I'll take this out of here and remove a couple of those shims because I want... This has been up about... Oh, sorry. This has been up about here. And I want it to be about here. That's the proper pressure. Okay, now here I am. Here's the little, the little gizmo thing, right? You see, there's a sh the shims are right inside there. Now I've got a ton of them in. I put a whole bunch in there because it just wasn't coming up to pressure. But now that it's up to pressure, I'll remove some and try and get the pro pressure set properly. Yeah. So there now. It's just. A little bit on the high side still but you know that's closer to where I want it 4.5 to 5.5 bar is where I want it 65 to 75 pounds so I'll pull out one more shim and then see how that comes from there there that's the reading that it should be about it could like hmm could take out a I think I got a shim and a half in there now I could take out another half a shim and it would drop it back to right here. I'll think about that for a minute and I'll read the book. Yeah, I'll take out one more half a shim and that should get it down to right. There, that's got the system pressure set right on 72 pounds or five bar. So that's right-ish, I think. I don't know if I can get any better than that. Now, on the cold start valve, it should, if I open this, here that should drop but we'll just see what happens it dropped but it came right back up again so what does that mean that means that the cold start valve is really not doing anything right does that mean that that solenoid there is broken no because it doesn't want to do it. that's not no electricity hmm okay now if I I'll just un unplug the distributor here so I don't get shit going into the mic. Uh, I'll unplug the uh, electronic ignition thing. And I'll turn on the key and give it about five minutes running and see what happens. See if anything changes there. Okay. Key's on. 
Now the cold start valve should warm up and that should change, but I don't think it's going to. I think there's something. I think I have to go back after the cold start valve again. Yeah, so there's five minutes and it hasn't changed a bit, so that's, hmm. That says to me that the cold start valve needs some looking at. Something's not right in there. I've got, I likely have something wrong in there, which, you know, big surprise, eh? That'd be a real big surprise. And that's such a pain in the ass to get into, but oh well, I'll get it out of there and, and we'll have another go at it. Now, I'm starting to understand things a little bit better now. So now, the next thing I want to do is just uh, unhook that. Wait. Uh, now, right away, the pressure drops off that much there. But after 10 minutes, it's supposed to have... Let me see, where's my piece of paper? Oh, after 10 minutes, it should be 1.3 bar minimum and after 30 minutes it should be 1.1 1 .1 bar minimum so 9 231 241 so i'll give it a while here and see if it goes down to somewhere down there yeah seven minutes and it's down to uh, the 1.3 so that's inside that's again fault in the uh, cold start valve. So I'm going to take the cold start valve out and I'll clean it up because I think uh, I likely have something going wrong in there. But you know how much I love to do things about five times and I've been in there a couple of times already so I'm getting good at it. Anyway, that'll be tomorrow because today I've got to go out for supper in a little while and uh, I can't do any more today. But I'll just leave that overnight and see what it's at in the morning. Yeah, here I am back again on the 924, right? And yesterday I was doing, I finally got the pressure to be correct. Or I think it's correct. And this thing here, the, uh, but I do believe there's a problem with the, uh, oh, warm up regulator behind there which I will take off and clean it up I think I've got some yucko in there I think I just didn't do a very good job the last time I know a little bit better now so but first before I do that I'm going to take these there's one two three four injectors I'm going to pull them out they're new injectors like last year I put them in and they haven't been used much so they're but I'm going to pull them out and then do a uh, a quantity test on them. So what you do is you put them all into their individual into an individual little thing and then you run the fuel pump until they get a hundred until one of them gets a hundred milliliters and then they add, then check how much is in the other ones and so I'll do that and we'll see what we come up with. Yeah now here I am to get the injectors out like here's number one here's number two the rubber stayed in there this is number four now number three I'll show you what I do the um, I've got a pair of vice grips clamped on the top top of the uh, injector bolt this is a banjo fitting here and then I just uh, as I figured this out last year when it was very very difficult like if you haven't if the injectors haven't been out of it since uh, time immemorial, then they're really tough to get out. But this works. So you just get the vice grips on there and then give them a bit of a lift with... Uh, like I'm just using the extensions from my 3 8 inch drill bit, 3 8 inch bit set, and that pops them up out of there. No trouble. And this one here, the rubber stayed on it also. And now that they're out, now I can go ahead and uh, do that test on it. I'll show you when I get that set up. Okay, here you are. So, I don't know, can you see all this stuff? So I've got a 100 milliliter mark on there. So I'll wait, I'll fill them up until one of them hits 100 millimeters, or that's the same as 100 cc's. 
and then we'll see what happens. Now I don't know whether they're going to spray right away because I might have to open this black thing there and then pull up on the on the uh, pull up on the airflow meter. We'll just see what happens here. Yeah, so that one's running. That one's not. That one's not. And that one's not. I guess they're all running. I guess that's the way they're supposed to go. Don't spill it. I'll just let it run for a while and see what happens. Yeah, they seem to be all all filling up the same, so Yeah, and it's got a nice they're a nice pattern to them. So I think there was some air in the lines there and like they cleaned out by now might put a battery charger on there just to make sure the pump stays at the same level of pumping ish but once this one here hits a hundred then I'll take them all off and compare them all yeah and the flow things right at five and steady so that's what it's supposed to do yeah, so this one's coming up pretty close to 100 here. And they all seem to be pretty close to the same amount. So I'm going to stop it right about now. I could use a bit more to get 100, but oh, I'm good. Well, it certainly does jolt it a bit. There's a hundred on there, right? No. Just, I'll give it 10 minutes. I've got this closed. So I'll give it 10 minutes and just see if that drops down. But now, hey Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, starting now. So there it goes. And then I'll, it looks like the uh, amounts are coming out pretty close to right. So. I'll pull it out and take a look. Well, there, that's a gratifying result. And so they're all exactly the same. So that means that this thing here, all the, you know, it's all working. Every one of them is working equally as well as the other one. Now, whether they're right or not, we still don't know, but I'm fairly happy with that. <laughs> So I think that I've got seven minutes left on my timer there. This thing here isn't dropping off much. We'll just wait and see. I'll give it another ten minutes, another five minutes. Yeah, so now ten minutes has gone by and this is at 1.5, 1.6 bar, 1.24, yeah, 1.5 bar. So, and the book says survey says it should be at oh let me find that little bit hang on yeah so after 10 minutes should be greater than 1.3 so it's 1.24 1.4 there and I've been more than 10 minutes after another 10 minutes and which would be in eight minutes time it shouldn't have fallen below 1.1 uh, bar so, just around the one mark there. We'll just give it 10 minutes and see how it looks then. Oh, hmm. Wonder what happened there. Did you get any of that? No, not likely. So I'll put the uh, injectors back in and be careful not to knock any dirt into there. And that should be okay. Now the next thing after this, I'm still waiting. I don't know if you got any of that. I'm still waiting for this another 10 minutes or another six minutes to see if it stays above 1.1 bar which it's getting close to but I think it might be okay that's with this closed now I'll do it again with that open and just but that'll be after okay I got to put the injectors back in likely uh, yesterday when I was doing all that testing without the motor running then a lot of fuel went into the oil likely hmm we'll see 
Anyhow, we'll get that sorted out. Yeah, that's after 20 minutes. It's just that one bar and a bit. So that's likely there's a little bit of a leak somewhere. I don't know whether it might be in this uh, testing equipment here too, though. So not I'm not too concerned about it, except that I do know that likely I have to take apart that cold start valve or cold start regulator and clean it up a bit, I think. There's another test that I'm just not going to do right now, which is to measure how much fuel the, the uh, pump puts out in uh, 30 seconds, I think. It's supposed to be 700 milliliters, 750 milliliters in, in 30 seconds. But I'm not going to do that right now because it's... I can't reach that thing back there. I'll see if it how it runs and if that if it's still not running when I finish everything else then I'll do that but for now I'm gonna leave that one be and if you want to do it you gotta unhook hello you can see down in here yeah maybe maybe not wait a minute I'll get a light I'll show you See if I can. Eventually, I'll likely end up doing it, but who knows? Maybe not. You never know. Down here, right over there, you can see that where my finger's pointing there. That's where the fuel line from the distributor here, this big fuel line here, which is a return line, goes and it meets into the return line down there to the tank. So you unhook that and then pull that line out and put it in a jug. But I won't be doing that right away. That's later. Later maybe, or if I don't, if I have to, I will. If I don't, I won't. Now, I want to be able to uh, put a piston stop in to number one piston and just rock the motor back and forth a bit to uh, see where top dead center is for sure. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, so I pulled out spark plug number one, and I've got all the cylinders full of gas, eh? Hmm, that's smart of me. So I have to pull the spark plugs out and get the gas out of there, I guess. We'll do the best we can. Yeah, yeah, so I had all the cylinders full of gas. So now I'll have to I'll check the oil, I think, and see how much gas is in the oil. Aye, aye, aye. Well, not too bad. I think. I don't know. I'll just do a little bit better checking here. Hang on. Yeah, I guess I better change the oil before I run it <laughs> anymore. It was all full of gas one other time, too. When I, when I first changed it, it was pretty gassy. Anyway, but it wouldn't hurt to change it again, so... I'll do that before, before too long. I'll just carry on right now. Hmm. I'll find the top dead center thing that I wanted to find. Then I'll see about, uh, hmm. Oh, rambling on, talking to myself here. Then I'll see about how to do the rest of it here. Yeah, right there. So that's. I've uh, hmm. put the block, like I have a thing for, it looks like this here, where is it? Looks like that. And it goes in and just, uh, it's got an adjustable end on it so that you can put it up against the end of this, so it hits up against the cylinder. So it's hitting up against the cylinder right, against the piston right now. And there's a white mark on it right here. So I'm going to put a white mark right down here on that. Just one minute. Now I was, I had the motor turned past top dead center and then backed it off to the piston hit my thing in there, right? I'll pull that out after and show you, but I can't do it right now. Now I'll turn 180 degrees on the crank, bring the piston up again until it hits, uh, hmm, it'll be on the other side of that, hmm, yeah. Because it's only one one turn for two, that gets one turn for one. 
So I'll bring it around one turn on that, and then that'll then I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So now I've got a mark there and a mark on the other side of it, so I can I'll back that off and pull that thing off the piston. Looks like it's about equidistance there. So where's my thing? Hang on, hang on, gotta get that thing out of there. I'm gonna show it to you. There it is. Here it is here. So you just put that thing in there and then it comes up and the piston hits up against it and then it's equal from each side. So now, you measure the distance from there to there and there to there and they should be equal-ish and that should uh, show you a top dead center then. So let me just see if I can do that. But I might just go and run it around one more turn then I'll have it on here too. Okay. Yeah, so that's that concludes that the uh, mark, which is right here, is top dead center because there's one, two, three on the fourth, right? And this one here is one, two, three, and on the fourth. So that's right there. Now I'm going to count these cogs around here and I'll figure out six degrees after top dead center and that'll be the timing mark that I want to have, right? So it'll be three degrees down there, six degrees on this one because this one here runs half speed. Okay, I'll figure that out. Okay, now I've got all the spark plugs out, right? And I've got this, I kind of figured out this 44 things here, right? Things, cogs. So if you take 44 um, of them and then every one of them would be, every cog is between here, here to here here to here is eight degrees so you want six degrees so from the center of this to about there is six degrees and I figured that out but I'll double check that and then I put a mark on there and I put another mark in there so that would be a point three degrees after top dead center which is the timing point for this motor we do believe okay then I'll be able to get the light on it and get it right ish we'll see but for now, I'm going to go get a jug of oil and I'll drop the oil out of this and uh, put another, put fresh oil into it, which doesn't hurt it anyhow. So there, there you go. Yeah, okay, I did, I did my, what do you call it? Put new oil in it. Hmm. Things never, never end around here. Anyhow, now I'll put the plugs back in and what's next? I have determined top dead center. I have it marked on the, I have the three degree mark on the flywheel and on here and I think I got it right hmm pretty sure I've got it right so and if it's not right well gee whiz um, likely better than it was before so three degrees after top dead center is the timing point with the gun so let me get the spark plugs back into it and uh, see where we go see if I can get it to run yeah, yeah, it's a real pain to get these plugs in and out of this thing. But I have the first three in. I have to just get number four in now. You have to sort of do everything by braille because you can't... You have to reach in from... For the first three, you reach in from the front here and you kind of get them. First one's easy because it's right there. But number two and number three are difficult because you have to reach in and just feel around in there and get them in the right spot. And then there's a the deep socket they go into. And then... Number four, I think I get it from here if I reach down in there. I'll just give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, there the spark plugs are back in it. That's a bit of an ordeal to get them in there. So if you don't have to take them out, don't. Anyway, I guess I did have to take them out because I had it full of gasoline. Would have been hydrolocked, which is a word I learned the other day. Maybe I'll use it a lot now, eh? That's the first time I've ever had an engine that did that to me or that I did that to an engine anyway next on the list is uh, I think everything's together 
everything checks as being correct. So let's see if it'll start and run. And then I'll see if I can get it timed up right. Okay. Yeah, I got the battery hooked up. I hooked the coil back up to the uh, electronic ignition thing. And I put the fuel pump relay back into the fuse box. So everything should be set to go. This can stay on. It doesn't, it doesn't affect anything and we'll just see if it'll run. Yeah, it started right up. Now I'll see about uh, putting the timing light on it and see what I can come up with on it. Just for initial, initial goops here. Hang on a minute or two. Yeah, now we're there. It's all set up and running, right? And the timing is set to the right place or close enough but it still doesn't no won't you don't get any uh thread out of it now is that the warm-up valve thing i'll just have to do some reading and find out because that works the uh, amount of fuel going in is equal But the good sign is that it's uh, not smoking out the back here anymore. And it actually sounds all right. But oh well. Now I guess I just got to do more reading and figure out some more stuff. Okay. That pressure steady as a rock at five, and I think it's supposed to drop off. But I'm not really sure. Hmm. I wonder if this thing here is an opening or not dropping that thing. Huh. No, it must be opening because the uh, it doesn't have a choice. But is that thing there not dropping down? Some of them have a spring in them, some of them don't. This one I don't know. It didn't have a spring, I don't think. But. I'll just watch this while I rev it and see what happens. Yeah, that doesn't change. take this off here and see what I can do. Yeah, there now I'm... Enough of that for today. I'll come back to it next time. Come back to it in the future and see what happens. The uh, Come back to it tomorrow and see if I can get it to run properly. It could be... I think uh, I'm leaning towards that or there's this solenoid thing here so I should check out both of those things. That solenoid is the uh, low-hanging low fruit, so I'll check that first and make sure it runs and then make sure there's electricity to it. Hmm, that would be another thing to do. Okay. Okay, so here I am back on the Porsche, right? So as far as I can tell, I've got the timing set right. Hmm, odd, but right. The warm-up regulator behind there might be wrong or this little thing right here might be wrong so I've got to check those two things another thing that happened is that when I was running the fuel pump without the motor running it loaded up the uh, cylinders with fuel like there was just a ton of fuel in there so that's I don't think that should happen I'm not sure on that but uh, that means that this is open a little bit where it shouldn't be open a little bit maybe hmm don't know Okay, I'll figure out that stuff as we go along. Yeah, so here I'm going to... I've taken off the air thing. Over there it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start troubleshooting this thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'll remove... I'll get in there and uh, undo that return line and see if I can check the fuel... the amount of fuel that's coming 
you know, return fuel, right? That was supposed to be in there anyhow like that. Something like that. Anyhow, but okay. First thing I'll do is that, but I'm going to pull the injectors out because I don't want to fill up the cylinders with fuel again when I'm running the injectors, and I'll just put it into here. I better clean that. Get a clean thing, right? Yeah, there I've got ready for the flow test on it. I've got that thing unhooked from down in there. I don't know if you can see that fitting down there, but very difficult to get it undone because it's made for, well, skinny hands or else before all this other stuff gets put on there, right? Anyway, I think it's 30 seconds, 750 milliliters, but I'm going to just check the book and find out. Yeah, the uh, amount is 30 seconds and 750 milliliters. So I've got, actually I went today and I just hot wired the start, the uh, hot wired the thing so that it's, all I have to do is touch that to there and count for 30 or, hey Google, set a timer for 35 seconds. Sure, 35 seconds. And we're starting now. 2, 31, 30, start now. See how much goes in there in 30 seconds. Eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Well, it looks like we achieved 750 milliliters. No trouble there. Because there's the mark right there, and I'm well above it. Okay. All right, Google. We can shut you down now. So, it's pumping enough fuel. Now, I'll just put that back into the tank. And it, it did indeed pump some into there. I don't know if that's hmm, an adjustment in here that I have to make. It must be. Aye, 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 aye. Oh, well, I'll put the uh, return line back together so that that, and I'll put this back in the tank. Hmm. Yeah, here's some good news. This thing was not working. It was jammed up. Now it's got, you see at the top there, this little screwy thing. I pulled out that little screwy thing I, and I hung it in here so that this end here wouldn't get wet. I didn't film any of that because that makes me too much noise. And then, uh, so I just hung it into the water, let it work away at this for a half hour. Then I was able to get this fitting here out of it. And I pushed a little, uh, I had a pointy thing, just a piece of wire, push it through. And I put some WD-40 in there and then I could get, I got the uh, mechanism to work. Then I put the electricity to it and it works fine, just like it's supposed to. So that's good news. We have a working item here. That wasn't working. That was probably causing some problems. Uh, whoops, sorry. Now I'm in the throes of getting this thing here out of there. I've got the hoses disconnected. It's got two different size hoses, so you can't mix them up. One side, one side goes one place, and the other side goes the other place. So now I'll uh, see if I can get that off there, and I'll show it to you when I do that. And another bit of good news: I put the this is the uh, bypass air or something like that. I forget the name of it. Anyhow, but it I put the electricity to here, and it it warms up like it's for a cold start stuff too, also, and it warms up as auxiliary air meter, auxiliary air valve, yeah, auxiliary air valve. So it warms up in about like four or three or four minutes and closes the valve and that's what it does. Like you just put the electricity to it and, and it, it does work. This thing here, this is the EGR valve. I uh, don't know what EGR stands for, I'll look it up sometime. Anyhow, but when you put the vacuum to it, it's got a vacuum hose here. So, with no vacuum, all of these are open. And when the vacuum goes to it, which is a temperature controlled vacuum thing, then it closes off this one. So, those two are the only ones open. This thing here goes to the air breather. So, that also gives it this, this gives, goes to the air breather. Where the hell does that one go? It might just go right to there. Let me check. No, it goes to the air pump. 
So, and then this one here goes into what they call the check valve, which is in there. This is the check valve. And I think that with the air pump not working, I don't think that, hmm, don't think it does much, right? Hmm, don't know. Then the uh, auxiliary air flow thing goes from here into here. So that gives you extra air in here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, no, there it is. That's off. No, you just have to hold your breath right and do everything like that and get that thing off of there. Now, this part here is where the issues are. And I can see some dirt in there. So that's likely got some yucko in it. We'll clean it out and then see how we can go, go from there. Yeah, now where am I? I got a light here somewhere, yeah. So in here, this switch here, this electrical connection goes on the back of the airflow, auxiliary airflow, right? This connection goes on the back of the uh, warm-up regulator. These two connections here go on the uh, thermo, like that uh, switch there that's supposed to get hot. Now, these ones here, I hooked up a LED light on them, and then I just put it up where I could see it. And you have to turn the key on, and they'll come on while the starters run, while the fuel pump is running. So it's uh, the it's dependent on the uh, fuel pump relay. Same though, so that one and this one here. They're both, and they both get power with the fuel pump relay. So, these two here, I don't know where the power comes from, so I'll have to trace that down and see if I can figure out why it's not getting any power to those ones. Whether it's a fuse or just something going on, or maybe I'm just being dumb. Okay, I'll check into that further. But for now, I'll take this apart and get it cleaned up because all the electrical stuff over there seems to be working except for one thing, and I'll get to that one. Yeah, so I'll put the camera down on here. These little bolts come out, and this comes off, right? And on the back, nothing, nothing spectacular in there. Then you have this spring here, and you've got this little thing here, which I put a bit of grease on last time. Then this bimetallic thing will come out, so there is an adjustment on it, like you can bash the hell out of it to push it one way or the other, but we're going to say that it's working all right for now. So the spring presses down on that, and it presses back. Oops, okay, that little bit here comes out. So I'll take that out of there. So I think that this wire here, or this one, is powered up from the cold start valve. There, I just cut them back half an inch and soldered on a new end on each one of them. Wait for the cool off and then I put them back on that switch there. Hopefully that'll solve it. That yeah, there, I've got that cleaned up and even the, uh, you can't really see it in there, but there's a screen in there and it looks pretty clean now too. So they say to uh, check the resistance on this biothermatic thing or whatever it is. It uh, heats up 
and the metal bends. Anyhow, but it should be 20 ohms across those two things there. And this one here reads 21.5, so I'm pretty sure it's okay. And then I made sure these, there's a hole right in the middle there. I don't know, you can see it past my face. Right in the middle there's a little hole. That's the outlet hole. The inlet hole is on this other one here. And then this little uh, metal thing, like this metal plate, it's what controls it, and it's got a, a doohickey. wonder where the doohickey is. Hmm, must be in there still. I'll get it out. Hang on. Yeah, so here's this little tiny thing goes in this hole here. And, yeah, it goes in here like that. And then that gets a pin there. You see that pin right here? That goes in on top of it and gets pushed on by this spring business. But the by this thing here take away the tension from the spring. So I'll uh, check all that out as I get it together here. Anyway, I'll let that sit and I'll put it together tomorrow because I think it's going to work okay once I get it all together. Well, I hope so. Anyhow, that's enough for today. <laughs> I'll see you again tomorrow. We'll get see how far we can get tomorrow. Boy, oh boy, I get things taken apart and put together and taken apart. I'm going to take a look at that um, thing there, the airflow meter because I think there's an adjustment in there that I'm missing on too. So I'll read about that and then figure it out. Okay, see you tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, there, there you go. So now, here I am putting this back together here. So the, you put that, their little O-ring goes in there and then I held it like this. So to be sort of sideways and then guided it in there using those screws and a pair of pliers. Not seeing to get that back onto its proper spot there. So I'll just finish putting it back together here. Now that, see this plate here, you can you can pound on that and push it in a bit farther and that'll make it uh, a different setting, but I think that's the factory setting there. So, let's let that be. This goes into that little hole there. Into that thing. This goes on top like that. And the spring goes on, like that. And then it's all, that's all set to go. So I want to prop this up because I want to put some electricity to it. Hmm, how can I do this? I want to see if this actually works. It's changing stuff, right? Because it should be coming this way. I'll do that off camera. Ah, well, there you go, nothing happened there. The uh, So I put heat to it. And, or I put the electricity to it and this got hot and this thing does move but it only moves about a millimeter like when it's uh, when it's hot the distance from here to there is 15.5 16.5 and when it's cold it's 15.5 so it's only like a millimeter but that's all it takes for this that little piece of steel in there that little piece of tin in there to push down and stop the flow of fuel so when it's cold start you want more pressure so it's open and it lets all the pressure through hot start you want less pressure so it's closed and it lets less pressure through anyhow that seems to be the, the theory behind it I think well I put the spring in there and now I'm just putting this back cover on it So this serial number here makes a difference on it. Like the uh, last three digits here are 011. Now maybe I'll write that down on my little piece of paper. 
because that'll make a difference on you can go and look it up and see what the pressures are supposed to be okay here we go I'm gonna put the cold start valve back into it start putting this stuff back together then I'll before I get it all back together I'll fix that thing because I think I've got some problems over there I did some research last night and it appears that I've got things wrong there as usual what the hell eh? okay I'll uh, start putting this back together yeah now there that's back in its spot there these things here like I've got the electricity hooked up on that I'll check that later with the uh, as I get along here get some of this leaves and things out of here the um, so this electricity goes to the uh, whatever you call that right there which works this electricity here goes to there and then these vacuum hoses they go all over the place but I better get them on down below here before too long here and get that sorted out okay yeah there it is it's all hooked in there electricity two uh, the two lines are in these three lines this line here goes to the bottom this line here goes to the cold start injector this line here goes to the top one there now I'll put the rest of that stuff together there it all works so maybe I'll just clean it a bit and put it in there yeah there now that's the auxiliary air valve in there right down here this is the uh, EGR valve which I think really doesn't do very much in this car because that air pump isn't working hmm might do something who knows and then uh, vacuum hose goes here we'll see where the other vacuum hose goes somewhere there now that's all back together vacuum hose vacuum hose vacuum hose on here down to the thermal thing vacuum hose on here down to the thermal thing wires are hooked on the thermal thing down there wires are hooked on everywhere now this um, auxiliary air hose air line it um, hooks directly into the breather air thing here this looks right on where is that thing over here hooks right on here and that goes into the carburetor there this thing here that thing there is supposed to be hooked on to there's a thing over there and I think I found a bolt the other day for it yeah so here's the the uh, what do you call it manual Porsche work trough manual so you, this that's the inside of the uh, where the airflow monitor measurer is right so e the uh, plate should be an even gap of 0 0.10 millimeters which is like pretty tin pretty tiny tiny 0 0.004 inches and I've come over here you can't hardly see it but it does have like that gap is this oops, the tool goes in there right all the way around so I think that's the way it's supposed to be right there then the next thing it says to do is to uh, like those things there the uh, injectors when when I turn on the fuel like I turn on the whatever you call that uh, electric fuel pump right these injectors should open but they shouldn't open until they, they hmm. yes they should open but they shouldn't open when the uh, like when it's just sitting like that at idle anyhow but uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean then then it says to adjust that screw the richness screw to make it just so that they go you turn the richness screw until they start until they start pumping out fuel and then you back it off a turn or something like that anyway I'll read the instructions I'll tell you okay I followed the instructions and uh, 
first off I had to readjust all the shims in here because that being open made a difference to it right so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what will I do here start installing stuff again first off I'll put the fuel injectors back into it then I'll get the air all the air stuff on here I did put a little plug in here where that adjusting screw is so it says that you should because it creates a vacuum leak if you don't mm -hmm. and you know how they love vacuums in this car so yeah here I go I'm gonna get this put together now yeah there everything's put together I don't know will it run I don't know we'll find out in a minute here well we'll find out right away see if it'll go again we don't know we don't know we don't know we don't know but look at That's wanting to go, so maybe it's just gotta uh, put my foot on the gas here a bit. One cylinder working, eh? turn the timing around a bit I'm not sure well at least it sort of starts so getting there getting there getting there yeah the pressure's dropping off that pretty quick okay now what will I do I'll just change I'll turn the timing a bit this way see if it'll get started and then go from there don't know what else I got going on here. That's about all I got going on. Hmm. Yeah, I've been chasing this fuel all day, and <laughs> the, the the problem is there's no spark. So far, well, I I don't know. Who knows, right? Some days I get going around in circles, but I think today my circle has been wrong or right or whatever. This thing here, I've got it turn too far down so I'll have to do the initial adjustment again I think it should be about there but I will I will uh, pull the radiator uh, that thing there what do, you, what do you call that distributor and I'm gonna put the points and plugs back and points in back and the condenser back into it because it doesn't seem to be any spark coming out of that electronic ignition maybe I blew it out or did something dumb I don't know yeah, there they are. Points back inside it. Now the uh, gap 0 0.16 inches or 0 0.4 millimeters or something like that. Anyway, I'll just see if that'll give it some spark now and see what happens. Yeah, well, now here I am uh, still not running and I really don't know why. But I'll just keep on pecking away at it, see if I can get it to run, and then I'll be able to uh, go from there, I hope. I thought there was no spark for a while, but then it seemed that, yeah, there is spark. Well, I put the, the points and plugs back, points and co condenser back into it, and there's spark now, anyhow. But still no, no go. I'm going to have to go backwards, because I think I've got all, all the adjustments wrong now. I'll let it set overnight. Maybe tomorrow I'll have better luck. Anyhow. Oh boy, here I am again today. And not uh, yesterday I didn't get much progress except for being frustrated with it. So now, a little bit of a fresh mind here today. I'm going to uh, go through things a little bit more systematically. Now I know that I've got the adjustment on this thing here. That little screw in there. I know I've got that all screwed up. So I'm going to back it off. So it's not feeding any pressure to the uh, oh to the injectors. That way the injectors won't be, you know, putting fuel into the motor on me. Then I'm going to start the pressure testing again 
and I'm pretty sure I have like with that closed you get system pressure with that open you get control pressure so the control pressure should be uh, the system pressure should be 4.7 to 5.2 so right in there on the gauge the control pressure when it's cold should be only like up here on the gauge and when it warms up it should go up to about here on the gauge and that control pressure puts pressure on the top of this that little uh, sleeve that goes up and down to hold this back when the wind when the when the air blows it up so if it doesn't have those numbers right the damn thing's not going to run but i got to take the pressure control module off the back of there and i think i can run the car if i'm you know get things together right i can run the car i can bring that thing out here and run it and sit it on top of the of the motor over here somewhere and run it from there because it doesn't have to be you know it doesn't have to be back there there's it's just a convenient location <laughs> but it's an awful awful location anyhow here i go i'll i won't waste your time pulling stuff apart when i get it out and start well first off i'm going to come up with initial readings and i'll show you that what i have for initial readings and then i'll write it down so that i remember i'll show you that and then i'll then we'll go i'll go and take it all apart and then i'll set it up for testing and getting it set right okay so there i did that um let me see what i did was i ran the fuel pump with this closed so i'm that picks up system pressure now it was at 4.8 right there bar two four six eight yeah so 4.7 to four point to five point something is good right 4.7 to 5.2 is good so 4.8 is okay i'll let it be there the uh, now i've just left that closed and i'm watching this to see if it's going to hold pressure on that side of the system for 10 minutes and i've got another six minutes to go so that'll be good okay yeah so after 10 minutes the um it's still at just below two bar so that's that end of it is okay now i'm going to do the pressure test business and open this up to see what the uh, cold pressure is yeah so there's the uh, operating pressure or whatever you want to call that and then cold pressure goes down to three and then you let it rise until it's happy again and it's up around getting up around four right i think it sits around four so it should be at 1.5 should be way down here when it's cold so that means too much fuel is coming through right i think so hang on yeah so here i've got it out and apart or the back off it anyhow there's the spring and there's the little dewey and there's the other dewey okay so this here this bracket this bracket here holds that bar on there or that metal plate on there now it came like originally it came there's a lock washer and a spacer now i'm thinking that maybe the spacer should be underneath it and that would lift it up and that would make it so that more pressure or less pressure less pressure maybe we'll just find out i'll put it back together and then test it yeah so there i've got that here now put some light here some light and i just hooked up the hoses to it keep them out of the way of all the belts and stuff but you know they i'm not going to start the car and then because the distributor's over on the bench so there now this thing here now I'm going to test it and see what happens after I made that change and I put the uh, thing on the other side. Now, did I put everything back in there? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'll try it out and I'll let you know. Yeah, so there now, like I've pushed it farther ahead at the cold and it's up to 4.8 now, so it's bigger. So I've gone the wrong way. It's got to go push the other way. 
okay I can do that so you see this this shaft here that's how you can adjust the different heights so I'm going to go I'm going to go and put it so that it's even here and without a shim and see how we come up with that number then yeah there now I've I've uh, moved it you know a couple of millimeters I think now I'll put it all back together again and uh, see what see what sort of pressure it comes up with this time so there now I've made a couple of adjustments on it and I made it higher and then I made it lower and still no no difference like uh, it's still so I'll have to take this apart again and just see what's going on maybe I have got something missing wrong in there yeah there now that's control pressure there is proper so hopefully it's not pushing some fluid into the cylinders right now don't think it is but anyhow so what what I did wrong what I had wrong was I needed power to this little solenoid in here that's a hot start solenoid so that it uh, I don't know I don't know what it does for sure but I put power to it and sure enough it all everything dropped so now I can start adjusting this yay there not much happened today the uh, spilled gas everywhere like mm -hmm. anyhow but the uh, I did get it so it dropped down to way down here now oops way down here now so the uh, the thing is working but it's not 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 uh, calibrated yet so I'll have to do tomorrow I'll try and get it set up and I'll try not to bore you with what I'm doing but I'll sort of explain how I did it and this gas here I've put in the waste okay yeah yesterday I thought I'd hit gravy with this thing but I hadn't because the um, there's down in there you can see that little that's that uh, hot valve hot start valve right down there it seems to work right it seems that it's correct this thing here but now this line this is the return line here it comes over here and it goes right in to this and then it should hit directly back to the tank so the fuel pressure on here is controlled by how much is getting through there and not enough is getting through there I guess so far now I did I tested I, I said to myself I wonder if one of these lines is broke because there's you know a couple of little burrs in the line right there but but I've checked and I number one I stuck this little gizmo on here and then I was able to push air just well just blow through it I opened that side there and blow through it so this line was clear then I put this on and put it all back together there and then I put a little bit of pressure on here and blew out to the tank and yet indeed the uh, line return line to the tank is open it goes but you can hear it bubbling in the tank so that's all good so now I'm going to go ahead and next step is to uh, play around with this a bit more and just see if I can get it to work right I, I started it up and it should be about 1.5 bar when it's running which is about right where that is right now but it's up here at 4.5 which is the same as close to the same as the operating temperature so that means that thing is not opening at all hmm now how can I test that to make it to get it to open I'll think about that yeah so there this thing here I've removed everything from inside there all the stuff that's supposed to hold it and it's at operating pressure so that means that's not opening at all so now I have to sort that out I do this right it must be leaking off a little bit because it drops out and then comes back up right so anyway that would be the dilemma right yeah there so the control pressure is starting to come down to a more tolerable level it's 
I was into that and I blew some air through it and I think it's inside the mechanism there is is constricted blocking it so it's now it's down to two and a half but it, like right now it should be full open it should be a 1.5 or something like that when it's full open like that uh, let me just let it run for a few minutes and I'll check my numbers here yeah cold is 1 to 1 1.5 and hot is 3.4 to 3.8 so I'm at 2.5 there so still need to do some more work on that to get it cleaned out properly so that would be therein lies the problem hmm how can I do this now so what I think I'll do is I'll take it apart again for the umpteenth time at least I've got a bit of an answer now it was constricted in here something was stopping the flow in there and don't know what it is but we'll see if we can get it out of there anyway that's holding pretty steady at that pressure now so I'm gonna just unhook it and then I'll and then it drops right down to zero right away here because well it wasn't that much anyhow anyway okay that's making a bit of progress yay what I didn't want to do in the first time around was take this little electrical gear out but you just there's a clippy thing here that clippy thing there holds it on there and there's like last time I had it apart I put a new seal in there and it was a pain to get that apart and it's a pain to get it together so I'll just do it again anyhow I've got it I've got this clippy thing out of there and now I'll remove the electrical element yeah there now I ran this like it's nice and clean now I put it all in the uh, into there and let it run for 45 minutes actually and then in the meantime I think I told you I had the fuel pump off but that noise thing was making noise so likely it was just buzzing away in your ear and so it's all back on and it was leaking right like just a very very tiny leak right there and so what I did was clean that all off put it together tight and then I put some Loctite on that copper washer there like Loctite 742 which is supposed to be like it'll as soon as it gets to, uh, it senses metal and pressure and then it hardens so I'll let, give it a little bit of time to harden up and then we'll go from there let's see if it that should stop any leaks there anyhow now I'll put this back uh, that's as far as I'm gonna put it back together for now and I'll stick it on the car and just see see what I come up with for results I'll let it down and get at it again yeah I think I finally got it cleaned out in there that's leaking a bit still I'll just see if I can stop that but this is at half a bar which is what that's okay I can get now I have a chance to adjust it right so I need it to be at one and a half bar when it's cold and I need it to be at three and a half when it's hot so I'll just get it set to be at one and a half which I can do just by adjusting the uh, height of the of the uh, element and then then I'll get it to go to the right size now what was going on like I I had it apart and I put it and I cleaned it out and I put it back together and then it still was not working right so I blew a bunch I put the back on and I blew a bunch of air through and that seemed to clear out whatever was causing the constriction in there but there's a little tiny you know a little tiny pinhole that's likely was constricted now it seems to be pretty steady there now like a rock and I'll see if I can stop this thing here from leaking soon yeah now I've got the control pressure at one bar which theoretically is all right but I'd like to just bring it up to 1.5 so that would be between 1 and 1 1.5 it should be right so I want to get it up to about 1.2 yeah between 1 and 1.5 so I want it up around 1.2 and then I'll so that would mean I just have to put another tiny take out a make less spacer in that so I don't have to take it off there but it's still leaking on the top there so I got to fix that so I had this spacer in there and it's 
uh, 1.7 millimeters deep. No, it's 1.54 millimeters deep. The uh, difference in the bars. So it went from one, there was one, this amount of distance here made 1.7 distance in bars. So to get it to make, I only wanted to get 0.4 distance in bars, then I need a little skinny one like that, which is 0.4 millimeters or yeah, 0 0.4 millimeters, which is that much there. And if I put that on as a spacer, that might just do it. We'll just see. Yeah, there. I've been working all afternoon to achieve 1.2 bar, 1.25 or something like that, which is the amount that I want for a cold start between 1 and 1.5, right? So 1.25. That's good enough. Seems to be pretty steady there. If I turn on the thing to go up to there, yeah, and then that that's the operating pressure or whatever they call it. And it comes back to 1.2, 1.25. Right on. Okay, so that's set there. Now, the next thing is to hook the electricity to that and see what happens when it warms up. I'll get to that. So I've got 1.1, 1.2 bar on here now. Now if I put heat to this thing, or if I put electricity to this thing, it should heat it up and that should rise in about three or four minutes. So I'll get back to you. Yeah, there, it is rising. Hmm, don't you love it when something works? Now what does it have to get to? It has to get up to 3.4 to 3.8. So it's got to get up around there. And it's been going now for just a minute. So let's give it another couple of minutes. See how it gets through. Yeah, so I'll have to let it cool off for a while. Now, it came up to 2.246, 2.6 and stays there. So that's, so I must, and I had the uh, lower end at 1.0 but I can go up to 1.5 or 1.6 by this graph here around 20 degrees in here and it should be between 1.1.3 1 to 1.7 right 1.3 to 1.7 I have a 1.0 so if I move this up to 1.7 somehow around there then I could that would move this up into the right area so have to just put another shim in or something like that okay I guess I got it. my work cut out for me still yeah so anyhow that's I've made some improvement to it and it's still holding pressure yay I don't know if that'll hold for 10 minutes or not anyhow the uh, the whole thing is getting better one of these days I might get it to run but for now I'm going to just uh, call it there for today because I'm, this is getting pretty long again and I'm pretty sure that you don't have that kind of time in your schedule so we have got it to the point where I've got some improvement in the pressures here and some improvement in the pressures there so that's uh, that's a gain I'm, I'm, I'm like that's that's a positive so not running yet but someday it will run properly i had it running of course but it wouldn't uh, didn't have any power and that was because of that thing right there the pressure regulator the warm-up pressure regulator so anyhow that's hope you enjoyed it and uh please like and subscribe and come on back for more you, you know there's more torture coming Okay, bye for now. Okay, so I guess this happened last night. I'll give you a, an update towards the beach. It's still snowing. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, so it did snow. Not too bad, though. There's about an inch and a half on the ground here. Maybe, maybe an inch. A little bit more up the hill. Down here at the sea level, it's warmer. A little skiff of ice or a little skiff of slush on the edge of the pond. 
not much to talk about. Oh, I guess it's winter's on us. Or deep into the fall anyhow, right? Buster is looking for something here and the muskrats come through here. The tide's outish, way outish. There you are. I don't know what's going to happen now with this snow, whether it'll stick around or I think on Thursday it's supposed to rain again, be warm. So, and it's Tuesday today. I think it's Tuesday anyhow. Anyway, see you later.